Who better than Sharon Lim? And Sharon Lim is the CEO of Browseware. And I get requests and I get a lot of, uh, there's a lot of conversations going on about digitization and especially about digitizing your supply chain. And hopefully, Sharon, you are going to share some of your thoughts and ideas. Please give a very warm French chamber to Sharon Lim. Sharon, Thanks a good to Thank see you. you. Thank you. All right. All right, I cannot, I can't figure anything that's digital, but sometimes analog things, you know, do give me a little bit of a problem. Thank you very much for the invitation today. It's great to get in front of everybody and just share. A lot of stories this morning has been amazing. Great insights from the brands. And my company basically also serves a lot of the brands. All right, I'm not gonna talk about 3D today. And uh, I've gotta say that that's not really, that's not really my area of interest, but I just own the company, that's it. All right, so what are we gonna talk about? There are a few things that are quite interesting to me. Keywords, all right, actually the ties back to what I'm gonna talk about. One key word today that I keep hearing about is connectivity. It's a great word, hold on to that. Another thing that I thought was really interesting was how 46%, if I'm not wrong, Anson, 46% of you actually says that the supply chain will actually be faster more digitized and so on. I think it's 46%. And then the other part that was actually, uh, I think was 30 or maybe around the 30% that says that we are, in five years time, we are going to be getting there. That's what I, I, I think number four means, we are getting there. Five years time, I'm, I'm glad that the majority says we are getting there because there's something about setting goals. If you don't have it on your board that says we are, we are going there today, you won't get there in five years. If you have on your board something that says we are getting there in five years, you're gonna be behind, all right? I'm gonna share some things. So topic today, rethinking your supply chain digitally. I intentionally put the word digital right at the back okay, and not talk about a digital supply chain. There is a difference, okay? What am I talking about here? All right, first, one word that's been used again and again, transparency, it, it's a little different. I know for most of you sourcing guys, all right, I came from sourcing, whoa, years, years ago, and it's, it's really different today, but you use the word transparency. Now, the word transparency in the physical world talks about, you know, getting insights into what your suppliers are doing, making sure that they are clean, making sure that they are doing the right thing, you know. I don't want to wake up thinking that, you know, the H&M founder, right? I, don't, I want to wake up knowing that I did the right thing. Okay. Now, in the digital world, transparency means around the same thing, but digital, things about, think about digitizing transparency. All right, think about that. Secondly, when you digitize transparency, I'll get to how I see digi what does it mean to digitize transparency, okay? But when you can bring those kind of transparency and you can actually digitize it, you will start to, that's when connectivity actually starts, okay? Not before. And when transparency dig is digitized, connectivity actually starts to happen, this is where we come into amazing opportunities, all right? For this, I wanna bring about, I wanna take a look at an industry that we all know, the industry of air travel. I just brought up Expedia, because I think that it was a, it's an amazing thing. I remember when they were first launched, okay? They talk about changing the way we do air travel, okay? Now, air travel, well, the reason why I brought this up is because air travel, for the longest time, up until, 15, maybe 15, 16 years ago, was very manual. You book a ticket, what do you do? Call a travel agent. If not, make a trip and go down. All right. And they were one of those industries that was hard to connect, hard to make transparent because of a lot of big players. Airlines, hotels, car rentals were not small players, you know. They were not small businesses. This type of industry that, that connects air travel is actually all big businesses, and many of them very have kind of a protective way of looking at very traditional industry. They have a 
Some of them, a bit of a monopoly. So the games are always very close in this industry. So when Expedia came out, the challenge was to try to connect all these guys, all right, their capacity, all right, even rate them today, all right, uh, their locations, put it all together and put you and I, give you and I the ability to actually search for it. Today, Expedia owns that number of company. I bet there's no one here who do not touch any one of those company. 16 years later, air travel has gone up tremendously, all right? But the way we do air travel today, different. We pick up, I do a lot of traveling. Last year, I did like 220 dates on the road. Last week, I was in Europe, five cities, five. Five cities, five days, okay? And I still, I know that we have a travel desk. I still can't figure giving someone my work to do. It's not because I don't like the work that they do. I just don't see why I have to send an email to tell someone I do it faster on my phone in between airports, all right, to book to the next city and decide what I want. But this is what, these are the opportunities that it brings to me as a consumer. But this is an opportunity that where transparency, when they digitize transparency, it brought, brought about a connectivity to me. It connected the consumers to otherwise a whole layer that I would never be able to do. Five cities, five days, and I was, quite honestly, changing hotels along the way. I don't know. My accountant is, or my CFO is not going to be too happy when she looks at my bill this, for this month. All right? But digitization sometimes looks like that. It's complex. It looks complex. All right? But hey, this is the highway. Okay? By the way, this is a highway in Japan, area shot, which I really like. Okay? But this is it. Even if it looks messy and the infrastructure looks, this is a highway. And this is what the digital highway is. It offers you opportunities. Trans Once you have everything online, and you're even, even today when you do air travels, I decide hotels all right, by ratings. I look at what others rate, and I decide if I want to stay, I don't want to stay. I get predictability on pricing. It's an amazing thing. Otherwise, cannot happen if you and I were not digitizing. That's it. It just wouldn't happen. But when it did, it brought me, it brought air travel, you know, and the future of products, of how we buy products and services and all that, we talk about millennials and all that, will be very different. All right? But this is where, your opportunity, where the opportunity is. First one, out of that 46%, wins. All right, so what does, I'm going to pull it back, uh, talk about fashion, because that's, uh, uh, most of my clients are in this industry called fashion, and um, so some of you are not from there, but those of you who are, you know how traditional it is. Okay, so what does it really look like? I just showed you an amazing highway picture, okay? Let's look at the uh, fashion industry and how supply chain really looks like. It's not that you can't travel on this path. Okay, each of these stones here, you know, it's just, just pieces of stone. Sure, they still form, you know, that path. You can still, your car can still ride on it and all that. But I bet with you, you don't want to put your BMW, all right, through this all day long. It's just so much friction. Bumpy. I don't want to be sitting, you know, okay, if I have to, I'll do it. And I definitely, most of you, a lot of ladies here wear high heels. Last thing you want to do is be walking on this, okay? So this is what supply chain looks like in the fashion industry. Anne talked about how more than half, um, more than half of the FOB is in materials. And materials, guys and all that, if there's any of you here, okay, are really, really traditional, hardly digitized, no transparency, you know, in terms of looking at capacity, looking at what you have, looking at what you're doing. No, nothing. So everything goes back to, I actually have a guy told me that they still have a fax machine. Okay, how is this even possible? But it's because your supply chain looks like that. All right, it's not connected. It's not digitized, so it's not connected, that it makes actually traveling this road, traveling this path, a bit of a stress. All right. 
social, economic, we heard from uh, Mr. Edward, all right, this morning from the Hong Kong Secretary of Chamber. And, you know, he talked about One Belt. He talked about all the changes that's coming, you know, political, so, political economic, and some of you, Pascal, I think, talked about social, all right? And and to touch on that as well, how fast things are going. So how are you guys going to get there? What is Industry 4.0 if you didn't even start anything with digitization? All right. I like this quote that says this. All right, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created that. Speed is one of the one of the things that everyone wants to get into. It's a big, big word on every management's desk, speed. Shorter lead time, speed. But speed is always big, all right? So I ask you, speed to what? If you know that your path is not going to, if your path looks like that, all right? Speed is only going to damage your car, and it's going to damage the person in the car as well, OK? What is speed then? How do you get speed? But what I'm going to say this is this. When we start to digitize and bring digitized transparency, OK, that's where speed comes at a different, it's, it becomes different. It's not about going faster on what you're doing today. It's about providing that, that transparency right now now changes how people interact with you and engages with you. And that difference in how they do it, work with you and engage with you, is what will bring about the new speed. It's not about going faster. The difference in how you work is how you're going to get to your orders or you know, to your decision making faster. That's what happens, not just about being faster, all right? I like this, okay? Don't fear change, all right? Digitization, I showed you the highway, expressway, it looks kind of, yeah, messy. How can I, how can I start? How do, how do I, how do I even start on this? But I say this, that the world is changing, and the speed of change, all right, the frequency of change, the dynamics of change doesn't allow us to stay where we are. It just doesn't. I, I don't set the rules, but somehow the world has set the rules, all right? And I, and I think digital technology platforms and all that have really changed the rules as well, all right? So if you think you can't travel on the supply chain that's fragmented and that's kind of uh, filled with uh, everyone working on itself. Another thing is you can't, your organization also cannot change when you don't have round wheels, all right? And you're saying, I don't want to change. I just want to do everything exactly as I'm doing. It just, I'll tell you right now, and I tell that to a lot of my customers, if this is really your mentality, then get out of business. Because if not, it's going to be really painful for you. All right, so what is transparency in the digital world? All right, I advocate this. It's not just about data exchange. It's about digitizing your transparency, okay? It brings about connectivity. It brings about people, all right? Ultimately, what we connect is not people process. It's not about pe process, all right? It's not about data. What we really connect, all right, in data and all that is we are connecting ourselves, we're connecting people, we're connecting our knowledge, all right, and with that connectivity of all our knowledge is where we start to be able to really play as a team. Even though we are, today's supply chain is really remote, all right, some of you have touched on things like equal partnership, all right, co-creation, co-management, you cannot do that without transparency. There's no connection. All right, but when there is connection, this is where you're going to enhance and you're going to accelerate. Another great example, okay. Oh, great, the ladies are not holding any badge. All right, it means that I'm on time, okay. Another great example I want to talk about, all right, when you digitize transparency, okay, 
that this is one benefit. Is there anyone who doesn't use write sharing? Great, everyone uses write sharing, so you know the benefits. One of the, I've been in Hong Kong, I speak relatively good Cantonese. But nevertheless, in the 20 years or so, or 25 years that I've traveled to Hong Kong, I hate the taxi drivers. It's very hard to manage the taxi drivers, even when I speak relatively good Cantonese, because they either don't know the location, or if they get you to the wrong place, I don't have a problem, but I get yelled at for giving them the wrong instruction. I gave you the instruction, all right? So either my tonation is wrong or something. Anyway, at the end of the day, if we don't get where we're supposed to go, I still get yelled at. That's why I don't like the taxi services, not just in Hong Kong, but also in New York City, all right? But this, guys, ride sharing, okay, really changed things. What are the few things that they did, all right? They brought about transparency. So in ride sharing, there's a lot of open sharing, and there's a lot of digitizing of transparency here. What do they do? Okay, they bring about Google Map. No one pays for it, all right? It's free. You and I don't pay for it. Someone else pays for it, technically, okay? But it's free. So they connect and they digitize. If, if Google did not come with maps, all right, we would not be living in a world that we live today. I thank God for that all day long when I'm traveling. Five cities and cities that I've never been to that I have Google Map that makes me feel I'm a part of a local, all right? So you have digitized map, all right? You have digitized drivers too because all of a sudden, you have transparency into the drivers. Drivers, uh, up until a few months ago, I had no idea that uh, every time I rate the driver, I knew that every time you rate a driver, it goes to something, but I never picked up a driver by looking at its rating. Until a few months ago, I was told that's a good practice to do. Okay, so I get driver's transparency, records of some sort, payments, e-payments, fintechs, and all that. That's fantastic. It's on the cloud, all right? I get access to the cars, okay? I know what cars are coming, black, red, white. It's cute. It really is cute. Every time I click on a car and the car that sends to me is a red color, it actually pops up in red. So I know what I'm expecting. Everything is transparent. And this is what makes it easy and such a wonderful experience for me, okay, as a passenger or as someone ordering a ride. This is business opportunities. Because prior to this, guys, completely new, it's not that you had no taxi. It's not that you had no public transport. You just didn't have the, it at this level. The highway, it seems that when you try to connect different stakeholders, when you try to connect everything, it's a highway, but it moves. It moves and under, everything is under the hood, but above the hood, we get this simple, clean ease. All right. This is what many of us look like today. This is how many of your process, your workflows, regardless of industry, really looks like today. Uh, this is what I call the, I have a funny thing that I say about this on uh, the fashion industry, referring to the fashion industry again, about how they use this process, which is linear and fragmented, and they do the submarine effect. All right, what's a submarine effect? It means that there's a, in the fashion industry, they have a date that says that, okay, this is the first milestone date, that's when everyone in this fragmented roles, all of a sudden they emerge out of their cubicles or their offices, they go into a meetings, they discuss with the, you know, out of their submarines, they discuss for a little bit, a couple hours, and then they go back down into their linear and fragmented workflows, they submerge again as submarines, and they don't talk for a couple of weeks, and they do this up and down thing, and you wonder, you really wonder why we have, uh, why we don't have problems. How in the world does connection like that, all right, actually helps? This is in a business that I do, and I say that this is why we take, at least in my business, we take visualization, all right, as an enabler to basically bring everyone together, all right? Because if everything was digitized, not just workflow, not just data, but visually digitize, transparency, then this is what I can do. 
I can now bring everyone together. All right, with that, she just brought me my sign, which means that I get off. All right, three words I want to leave with you guys today. All right, if you forget about everything about this, I want to show you guys, some of, some of you here have been to this factory that I introduced. It's across in Shenzhen. Everything powered by IoT, all right, RFID, each process. This guy, the founder of the company, is not a fashion guy, but he decided to set up a factory, all right, that's making shirts. The guy is a Silicon Valley eBay guy, all right, that decided that he's going to give consumers direct access through IoT, talking to his device, through RFID, so that his consumers will always know which part of their, where is their orders in any part of their production. That's amazing. I leave you with this quote, and with that, uh, you guys can read since I'm supposed to get off the stage. Thank you very much for the time. <laughs>